In this presentation, we will take a look at a materials ledger card and materials requisition form. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. This is going to be an example of a materials ledger card. And you can note that it's going to look very similar to us tracking inventory. We're basically tracking the inventory of materials. So if you work with a merchandising company, a company that purchases and sells inventory, we'll have a similar kind of tracking system that we might use uh, for the tracking of inventory. In this case, of course, we're using it for one component of inventory, one component of, uh, of in this case, the, the type of services or the type of inventory that we make. So if we make guitars, for example, uh, the major component might be wood. And so we would have to uh, track that major component in a similar way that we would have to track the entire uh, units of inventory for a merchandising company. So we might have things like uh, on, on the inventory items. Uh, in, in this case, we're going to say it's the wood planks. Uh, we might have a stock number. We might have a location in the storeroom if we have a large storeroom. Maximum quantity, uh, minimum quantity, and quantity to reorder, a, a reorder point when we want to uh, reorder. And then we're going to break this out then uh, to the received issued and balance so this means received like we purchased it and we have received it so this is when we're getting the inventory issued would be similar to our uh, sales type of item or their cost of goods sold if we were a merchandising company in this case we're not selling it it's not leaving the company it's going to another department it's going from our warehouse basically to the production department to the factory to the work in process and then we're going to have the balance here which is going to be what we what is kind of on the balance sheet as of the ending product so if we think of the the balance sheet this is going to be what is still included in our inventory items of just raw material and then we might be tracking this information for example on uh, march 4th we said uh, we had received uh, so we have a receiving report and this is going to be the documentation we might use in a large company to tie this out to uh the to the receiving report so in other words this came from a receiving report the the uh, warehouse would have received this information counted it we have then the receiving report two units and then uh, we're going to have the unit price uh, 225 and then the total price is the two units times the 225 or 450. now if we bring this over to the balance we started with one unit at 225 or 225 and now we, we're bringing over this two units. So now we've got the two units and the one unit, or of course, three units. They still all cost 225. And therefore, three times the 225 means we have a total of 675. So as of March 4th, we have $675 worth of inventory for wood planks. And then we're saying this time we have an issuance. On March 7th, we had an issuance. What, why would we issue? Well, there was a request from the work in process for say there's a new guitar we need to make and they ordered a, some planks of wood one plank of wood apparently and we then have a requisition form that's going to be the form from the work in process the factory saying hey we got a we've got a, a project that we need to work on here's the the form we're going to say that's for one unit one plank cost 225 notice this isn't the sales price we're not dealing with any sales this is all internal purchasing going from one department to another now to work in process to the factory here's the total if we go to the balance then we had three units we just issued one from the warehouse so how many are left in the warehouse only two times the 225 and that gives us the 450. now a couple things to note here uh note that obviously you might think well wait we still have three units because it only went from one department to the other and that's true but we're not going to be tracking it here in work in process now it's not going to be included in the balance sheet account of materials it's going to be included in the balance sheet account of work in process we're going to apply it this one unit now it's going to be applied from this materials to the work in process gl account and be supported by a job cost sheet as opposed to being tracked in our just materials ledger also note that this system works well if these units planks of woods don't change in value meaning uh if if the planks of wood become more expensive over time just because of inflation then we're gonna have similar issues that we have with um, inventory tracking 
we're going to have to use some type of method, actual cost of the inventory and track it, specific identification, or probably some kind of cost flow like first in, first out, the assumption that uh, we have the first in, first out assumption, last in, first out, or average. So we'll have those same kind of inventory tracking problems <laughs> that we have for the materials ledger as we would for uh, just inventory in general. And then we got, this would be the requisition form. So when we had this item here, this isn't gonna be the same form, but when we had this requisition, this is the type of form that we would use for the requisition. And remember in a big company, then we would have to have this process of, of one department requisitioning. So if I'm in the um, warehouse and I'm asking for a plank of wood, you know, I'd have to go, I'd have to go, I mean, if I'm in the working process, the factory, and I need a plank of wood to make our, our project, then we might have to use a requisition form to get that wood from the warehouse. Now, of course, the smaller a company is then, uh, and if we're a construction company working on a job, then uh, the, the requisition forms might be similar to just the receipts, you know, that we're using in order to purchase materials that will then be supportive of, of what we're going to be using in the, in the work in process. So the requisition form here is being used for us to take it from the warehouse that it's already been purchased but it's also gonna be the form that we're gonna use in order to apply it to a job when we create the job cost sheet. So uh, the requisite, and so when we create the, if it was, if we were a smaller company, we might use, you know, receipts to create, of course, the job cost sheet for the materials that we would be purchasing. So we're gonna have the job number that we're gonna have on here, uh, the materials, the quantity that we need, one plank of wood, uh, quantity provided, hopefully they're the same, unless the, you know, the department didn't give us, maybe they didn't have, the warehouse didn't have all we need. And then we usually have it filled out by, because we wanna be able to track an audit trail that we have here. And then and we've got the date, uh, the, the materials description, the plank of wood. This is the requester uh, and this is filled by. So obviously we wanna have the two individuals. We wanna have someone requesting one, one uh, filling it out. That gives us a system of controls, meaning it would be difficult to steal the plank of wood if we have to have two people involved in the requisition process without having some type of collusion in order for that to happen. Date provided and material received date and any remarks that we might have. So this would just be the form, just, just a form for us to get that wood from the warehouse to the work in process so we can start working on it. And remember that all ties out to, to this form as well. So this requisition form is gonna be used here on the, on the uh, material side to get the materials out of there and it's also going to be used on the supporting document. Not that this isn't the actual form we'll see here, but it'll also be used in this document, which is the job cost. So we're moving the materials then over here to the, to the uh, job cost system. So we still have our, our job, job 15, and we're going to allocate this requisition form to it. And um, that, will, that will mean that we're still tracking the wood. It's still there. It hasn't left the company because we haven't sold it yet. But now we're tracking it in the account of work in process. And that account is not supported by us, us tracking the inventory in just planks of wood. It's supported by our job cost sheets. So our job cost sheets are now supporting that piece of inventory. And we're going to have it in this job cost sheet up until it's finished. And then we'll have the job will move to finished goods. And it'll still be supported by this job cost sheet. And then we'll finally sell it. And once we sell it, We'll, we'll then move this, all these costs, all these inventory that we bought, uh, and you know, all the material we bought, all the labor we did, all the overhead, will then be finally expensed in the form of cost of goods sold at the point of sale. Now we'll take a look at a journal entry related to the materials requisition. So every time we have a materials requisition, we're gonna have a journal entry for it for the general ledger accounts. Here we're gonna say for all these different jobs. So we're looking at all these jobs and we had all these requisitions for these jobs. We're gonna sum up those requisitions. So we're just taking these documents and uh, summing up the materials that were requested. And that's gonna come up to a total of uh, 2,230. So the journal entry then we will have is gonna be the raw materials going down, the raw materials here are going down, and then it's gonna be moved to the work in process account. So raw materials is an asset account. It has a debit balance. We're moving it from the raw materials from the warehouse. So that's going to decrease and we're going to move it not too far to another inventory account to work in process. So work in process is an inventory account. It's an asset account. 
it represents the inventory we're working on, it's going to be increased. Now that's going to be for the direct materials, those that we can apply directly out to the uh, guitars, if we're making guitars. Now there also might be some materials that are indirect, meaning something like glue or something like that if we're making guitars. And if we say that there was requests uh, for, for glue or something like that that was indirect that we couldn't find to a job, we didn't no job applied it, we just are basically taking stuff from the warehouse and assigning it just in general to be in the warehouse. We just gave them glue that can be assigned to anybody who wants to use it in the middle on any guitar <laughs> that they start to work on. Then we don't know which job to apply it to here. And so those may still come out of just the materials. We might still have just uh, materials that will be there or we might try to track those types of materials separately so in other words we might have a materials account that includes all materials direct and indirect or we might try to have another account just just has the indirect stuff and and track those separately in this case we're going to say they're all in raw materials and then the indirect materials we're going to say okay that raw materials is going down by 550 and the debit's not going to work in process. Why? Because we don't know which job to assign it to. It just went into the warehouse and anybody who's making a guitar, either any of these jobs that are working on a guitar can use the material. So that means that we, we can't assign it yet. We can't put it to work in process because we cannot support it. We can't back it up by particular jobs. So therefore we're gonna put it into the bucket uh, factory overhead. It's still kind of an asset because ultimately it's gonna go into the work in process it's just that we're going to have to assign it to a job first we're just going to put all the stuff into a bucket and then find some way to assign it to a job so if we look at those journal entries then we're going to post out the work in process started at zero it's going to go up by 2200 to 2200 and you can see that work in process then is here on the trial balance and then uh the raw materials here's the general ledger from a raw materials it was at 1,500, uh, 150,000. It's going down with a credit, 2,230 to 147, 770. So we just moved it from raw materials to work in process. And then this side, factory overhead, went from zero up by 550. So here's the factory overhead at 550. And then the raw materials are going to go down again. So raw materials, 147, 770 going down by 550 to 147, 220. And that then is gonna be the 147, 220. So, so yeah, what's 147, 770 before? Now it's down to the 147, uh, 220 that's represented here on the trial balance after both of these have been completed. Note that none of this, this whole process, is not doing anything to the income statement. We bought the materials, we, we're starting to use the materials, Never going to hit the income statement, never affecting net income until, when's it going to affect net income? When we're finally done, we move these from work in process to finished goods, and then we move them from finished goods to actually selling them, moving them to cost of goods sold. Now, we will sell it. Sales will increase at the same time at that point. But what we're working on is the cost of goods sold that will, will ultimately be the cost. So all the stuff we're doing here is just kind of shuffling around on balance sheet accounts, just shuffling around basically on inventory asset type of accounts to track this process as it goes through and being able to support the process with job cost sheets. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.